Welcome to Music with Mrs. Avery. Welcome back to the North Carolina Symphony Virtual Experience. Let's look at all of the instruments that we have learned about so far. Last week, you were on your own to research the brass family, and you were asked to classify the instruments from highest pitched to lowest pitched. So the correct order is trumpet, trombone, French horn, and tuba. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the brass family last week. Remember, we have already learned about all of the string instruments. And these instruments are in the string family because of the way they produce their sound by the vibration of strings. And we have already looked at the woodwind instruments. And remember, these instruments are all in this family because of the way they produce sound by either blowing across or through a mouthpiece. And the brass instruments are also in the fa the fi this family because of the way they produce sound by buzzing and blowing through the mouthpiece. So let's get started looking at our last instrument family of the orchestra. This family is the percussion family. And the percussion family is the family that houses all of the instruments that you strike, hit, or shake in order to produce sound. And there are many, many, many percussion instruments, and we will limit the number that we look at during this lesson and our next lesson. But we are going to actually break down the percussion family by two categories. We are going to look at the main percussion instruments today. And then next week, we are going to look at what we call the auxiliary percussion instruments. And the auxiliary percussion instruments are those instruments that only play once in a while during a song. They ornament or decorate the song. The main instruments are the instruments that play typically throughout a piece of classical music. So the first main percussion instrument I am going to introduce you to is the snare drum. And many of you have probably seen the snare drum before, possibly in a marching band, it's also part of a drum set. So the snare drum, the oldest ancestor of a snare drum um, was made of wood. This is now made of metal. It has a head on top and bottom. And underneath of that bottom head, there is a strand um, or many strands of silver beads and we call those beads the snare and that is what gives the snare drum its unique rattle sound because when you strike the top head of the snare drum those beads that snare vibrates and rattles underneath and taps the bottom head of the snare drum the snare drum is played with wooden drumsticks and it is typically on a metal stand. So the musician is standing behind the snare drum when they play it. Now the snare drum joined the orchestra over 200 years ago. So let's listen to this snare drum. And you can hear that specific timbre of the snare drum and how it rattles from the snares. 
next. I am going to introduce you to the bass drum. So the bass drum is much larger than the snare drum. So its sound is going to be a lot lower. This drum typically sits on a stand that rolls because this drum is very, very heavy. And you play the bass drum with a mallet and the end of the mallet is covered in felt or wool and you tap the bass drum right in the center of the drum. Now, a composer you may have heard of, Mozart, introduced the bass drum to the orchestra back in 1782. It's constructed the same way as a snare drum, except it does not have the snare underneath those little silver beads. Let's listen to the bass drum. Listen carefully or you might miss it. Let's listen again. So it just makes that boom sound. I have one last drum to show you. And this drum is called the timpani. Sometimes they call the timpani the kettle drum because it looks like a giant kettle. The timpani is made out of copper and it has the head on top and it sits on the stand and there's a foot pedal. So the timpani is different from the snare and bass drum because it is a pitched instrument. That means when you strike the top head, it actually plays a specific note and you can tune the timpani to play different notes. And then you see that pedal that I mentioned earlier. When you press on that pedal, it acts very similar to a piano's pedal it makes the sound sustain or hold out as you are pressing down on the pedal. You use drum mallets to play the timpani as well, and these mallets have a softer head, typically felt, um, sometimes wool. So remember, the timpani can also be called the kettle drums, and they were introduced to the orchestra over 300 years ago. Let's listen to the timpani drum. Can you hear the pitch getting higher and lower? Pretty neat. I have one more instrument I'd like to introduce you today. And this instrument often plays throughout the entire song. It is not a drum. but rather we classify it as a keyboard percussion instrument. And that's the xylophone. And the xylophone has the same um, pitches as a piano. And you will see it has the bars that are set up just like the black and white keys on a piano. And then the xylophone has these pipes underneath. So when you strike, the bar, that bar vibrates and that sound travels down that tube and out into your ear. Xylophone players can play with hard mallets or soft mallets. The hard mallets um, give a sharper sound while the soft mallets play a more blended sound. 
Um, the xylophone has only been in the orchestra for a little over a hundred years. Um, and it plays the melody often. It's one of the percussion instruments that picks up and plays the melody. So let's listen to the xylophone. Neat, correct? So let's add in our main percussion instruments. First, we looked at the snare drum. Then we looked at the, sorry, bass drum. Remember the bass drum was that really big drum. Then we looked at the timpani. And remember the timpani is a pitched drum. And last we looked at the xylophone, which is a keyboard percussion instrument. For your assignment in Google Classroom, you are going to recreate our orchestra tree map and classify the instruments by instrument family. So for this assignment, you are going to need a blank piece of paper and a pencil. You can use the template of my orchestra tree map to help you as you organize all of your information. I ask that you classify your instruments from highest pitched to lowest pitched. When you're finished, please take a picture of your tree map, attach it to this assignment and turn it in. Then I want you to put your tree map in a safe place because you are going to need it for our next lesson. I hope you enjoyed learning about the main percussion instruments. Thanks for joining me.